lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. And here's your host, Miss Kim Rodman. And now it's time for our Faithful Financial Moments with Sister Sharon Richard. This is Sharon Richard with your Faithful Financing Moments. One of the biggest expenditures that we all have is the cost of food. As food costs have continued to rise, many have struggled to stay within their food budget. There are some things that you can do to save on food costs. Number one, buy bulk when possible. There are certain items that can be stored for long periods of time that are healthy for you, such as rice, beans, and pasta. 
When you see a great sale on these products, consider buying in bulk. Or if you can, get a great price at a club store. It may save you money on these products over the course of the year. Number two, take note of which stores tend to sell certain items at a lower price. I have gotten to the point where I will only buy certain items from certain stores. So I may visit one store for certain items one week and then go to another store where I prefer to purchase other items. Of course, always keep an eye on items that you purchase that may be on sale at any of the stores, but you should get a, get a sense for which store in your area generally has cheaper prices. A recent study indicated that simply by shopping at less expensive stores, the average family could save at least $5,000 per year. Number three, avoid spur-of-the-moment grocery shopping. We all have a tendency to buy more than we need during unplanned shopping trips because we are walking the aisles to see what looks good. It is best to develop a weekly meal plan and the corresponding shopping list that you take with you to the grocery store. How often do you find that you purchased an item from the grocery store only to discover that you already had the item at home? Additionally, the weekly meal plan will help you to take full advantage of leftovers. Perhaps leftover baked chicken would be perfect in a casserole the next day or on a salad. Developing a weekly meal plan will help your family to eat healthier and help you to save money because you purchased only what was needed. You are also less likely to make the last-minute decision to eat out, which would only be more costly. You should also minimize paying for the, for the store to cut up your item. Today, when you go to the grocery store, you notice many items are partially prepped for you. For example, you can buy shredded cheese, chicken parts, sliced vegetables, and chopped onions. Rather than buying those chicken parts, buy the whole chicken. It is cheaper, and you can bake the chicken for one meal and then take the remains to make a wonderful chicken soup for a future meal. I realize that we all purchase these items to save time. However, where possible, consider taking the longer route to save the money. Investing in a good food processor to help you complete these tasks would be cheaper than continually paying the grocery store to do it for you. We all must make that trip to the grocery store, but it does not have to blow your budget, and it may actually be an opportunity for you to save a little extra money. This is Sharon Richard with your Faithful Financing Moment. Stay tuned tonight for an exciting special announcement, followed by Nina Taylor with Your Gospel News. And of course, get ready for the thought-provoking discussion on the Pastor's Corner with Elder Ernest Richard Jr., Apostle Irvin Whitlow, and company. Coming to Morning Star, Volume of the Book Church International, 125 Dixel Avenue in the city of New Haven. It's the 24th Annual Holy Convocation, hosted by Apostle Vincent L. Smith and Lady Yvette D. Smith, taking place July 22nd through the 28th in the year 2019. This year's theme, if you thought that was crazy, just watch my growth. Preaching on a nightly basis, starting off Monday, Bishop Robert J. Gay of Greenville, North Carolina, Chief Prelate of the Unison Free Will Baptist Churches Incorporated. On Tuesday night, Bishop Desert Nick Willow M. Moody of Agape Christian Center of New Haven, Connecticut. On Wednesday night, Lady Kadeem Steele of Mount of God Churches Incorporated. Thursday night features a very special session with a live recording of the Apostle Irvin I. Whitlow from the Pastor's Corner of Dunamis Assembly Worship in Augusta, Georgia. On Friday night, Kenya Moles Bird of Cathedral of the Holy Spirit will be coming to preach. 
during the day from 4.30 to about 6 p.m. Back to God, featuring Minister Brian McCall of Morning Star Church of New Haven, Connecticut, Prophetess Jamaica Jeffries of Freedom International Ministries of Hamden, Connecticut, Minister Shane Hawkins of Wayfaring Ministries of Hamden, Connecticut, and Pastor Plachette Garland of Move of God Deliverance Ministries of Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Also in the morning sessions, Tuesday through Friday, there are going to be workshops featured by Pastor John Cotton Jr. of New Hope Baptist Church of New Haven, Connecticut, Reverend Kelsey Steele of Verrick Memorial AME Church, and Pastor Ernest E. Richard Jr. of Power to Stand Outreach Ministries, Associate Pastor at Miles Memorial CME Church. Also, there is going to be an ordination on Saturday, the 27th at 12 p.m. Come one, come all. Let's go up in the Holy Ghost. Come join Apostle Vincent L. Smith as he closes everything out on Sunday at 12 p.m. If you want to have a high time in the Holy Ghost and you want to release a crazy praise, then meet me at Morning Star, Volume of the Book Church International, 125 Dixwell Avenue in the city of New Haven. Hi, I'm Nina Taylor, and here is your Gospel News. June is Black Music Month. Let's remember the Reverend Dr. James Edward Cleveland, born December 5, 1931. He was a gospel singer, musician, and composer known as the King of Gospel Music. Cleveland was a driving force behind the creation of the modern-day gospel sound by incorporating traditional black gospel, soul, pop, and jazz in arrangements for mass choirs. Throughout his career, Cleveland appeared on hundreds of recordings and earned four Grammy Awards. He was the first gospel musician to earn a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. He was inducted into the Gospel Music Hall of Fame in 1984 for his pioneering accomplishments and contributions. He is regarded by many to be one of the greatest gospel singers that ever lived. He is best known for his gospel classics, Lord Help Me to Hold Out, Peace Be Still, I Don't Feel No Way Tired, and Jesus is the Best Thing That Ever Happened to Me, just to name a few. Born in Chicago, Illinois, Cleveland began singing as a boy soprano at Pilgrim Baptist Church, where Thomas A. Dorsey was minister of music and Roberta Martin was pianist for the choir. He strained his vocal cords as a teenager while part of a local gospel group, leaving the distinctive gravelly voice that was his hallmark in his later years. In 1950, Cleveland joined the Gospel Airs, a trio led by Norsalis McKenzie and Bessie Folk. His arrangements modernized such traditional standards as Give Me That Old Time Religion and It's Me, O oh Lord. Cleveland's went to work with his childhood friend Albertina Walker, popularly referred to as the Queen of Gospel and Star Maker, the founder of the Caravans. James Cleveland signed with the historic jazz label Savoy Records in 1962, going on to release a huge catalog of soul gospel recordings from that year until his death in 1991. Throughout his career, he recorded with others like the Gospel All-Stars and the Gospel Chimes, mixing pop ballad influences with traditional shouting. In 1959, he recorded a version of Ray Charles' hit, Hallelujah, I Love Her So, as a solo artist. James Cleveland signed with the historic jazz label Savoy in 1962, going on to release a huge catalog of soul gospel recordings from that year until his death in 1991. In November of 1970, Reverend Cleveland founded his own ministry and church, Cornerstone Institutional Baptist Church in Los Angeles, California, which grew from 10 to thousands of members throughout the remainder of his life. In the 1960s, James Cleveland moved to Detroit and took a position as music director at the famed New Bethel Baptist Church, where the legendary Reverend C.L. Franklin, father of the Queen of Soul, Aretha Franklin, was pastor. In 1972, Two, James collaborated with Aretha on her historic, Grammy-winning, and multi-million dollar selling album, Amazing Grace. 
the historic documentary film Gospel, released in 1983, features James Cleveland for the first time on a motion picture screen. It also features the Southern California Community Choir, Walter Hawkins and family, the Mighty Clouds of Joy, Shirley Caesar, and the Clark Sisters. In 1968, Cleveland taught others how to achieve the modern gospel sound and preserve the industry's rich legacy through his annual workshop and convention entitled the Gospel Music Workshop of America, an organization he founded with Dr. Albertina Walker, which now has over 150 chapters and well over 30,000 members. On February 9, 1991, James Cleveland died in Culver City, California. He was 59 years old. Some reports say that the cause of death was congestive heart failure, stating that the singer had fallen into a coma shortly before his death. Here's your Billboard Top 10 Gospel Songs for this week. Number 10, Fred Jerkins featuring Last Call with Victory. Number 9, KCJ, If God. 8, Todd Delaney, You're Doing It All Again. 7, Tasha Cobb Leonard, You Know My Name. 6, Corinne Hawthorne, Unstoppable. 5, Joshua Rogers, Pour Your Oil. 4, Fresh Start Worship, Mention. 3, Donald Lawrence presents the Tri-City Singers featuring Leandria Johnson with Deliver Me. Number 2, Demetrius West and Jesus Promoters with Open the Floodgates. And number 1, for 9 weeks in a row, Kirk Franklin with Love Theory. Remember to connect with me on all social media, on Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook, and write me at thegospelnewswithnina at gmail.com. Let's get back to more great gospel music on this great station. Hello, I'm Nina Taylor, your Gospel News Reporter. And you're listening to The Pastor's Corner with my friend, Elder Ernest Richard, on Elation Radio. And of course, you can join my dear friend, Nina Taylor, along with my wonderful wife, Sister Sharon Richard, and the wonderful host and cast of The Pastor's Corner every Thursday night at 10 p.m. Well, welcome to another edition of The Pastor's Corner. I'm Elder Ernest E. Richard, Jr., your host along with my brother from another mother, the Apostle Irvin I. Whitlow. Are you there, my friend? I know you are. I can sense you. I sense your spirit. Come on and talk to me. (laughs) Well, the blessing of the Lord be upon you, man of God. We thank God for another opportunity to be here joining everybody in Radio Land on the Pastor's Corner. I'm so excited because I believe that God is going to do something phenomenal on this evening. And I was listening to your wife as she was saying, uh, stay tuned for the thought-provoking Pastor's Corner. That's right. We want to provoke your thoughts because we want you to think the way God would have you to think so you can do what God would have you to do. And I'm excited about the convocation that's going to be at Morningstar, volume of the book. That's going to be off the chain, and I pray people make it their business to join us there. Amen. Oh, my (laughs) God. The three of us are going to be in the room at the same time. You know that already is going to be some serious stuff, but it ain't about us. It's all about him. But listen, let's get the rest of the crew in here. We're looking for that wonderful couple from the uh, California area, Pastor's Daryl and Donna Pointer, and I'd like to believe that you are with us. Are you there with us, our friends? Actually, they're not joining us tonight because he's okay. not feeling well, so we want to keep him in prayer. All right. All right. And what about uh, Pastor Dawn Westbrook? I gather she's not with us either. Well, mm-hmm. I know that uh, I'm hoping Apostle God Vincent bless Smith you. So, it is so great to is. be with you tonight. Amen. I was muted. <laughs> praise the Lord. But nonetheless, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's his greatness. We are going to have hallelujah. a great night. Yes, we are. I'm going to tell you, I'm excited myself. Now, I'm wondering if Apostle Vincent Smith made it in to be with us tonight, along with Prophetess Clichette and uh, Pastor Kenetta. I don't know if the three of them are here, but if you are, speak up. Don't bother holding your peace. (laughs) Grace and peace to all of you. The Lord bless you. And I am looking to a blessed time in our discussion tonight. I believe God has information, amen, that is going to rock somebody's world. 
Amen. What about your prophetess, Plachette? Are you with us tonight? Okay, we'll give it three, two, one. If she comes in, she comes in. And uh, Pastor Kenyatta, has you made it tonight? They're probably coming in a little bit later, and I pray that they do make it. But listen, we're not going to spend a lot of time. As you know, I would ordinarily do uh, Facebook Live, but I trust and believe there are others out there who are literally doing Facebook Live for us. And I thank God for those the outside help and those individuals who took it upon themselves to make sure that the social media crew is well-serviced in letting us hear this great word. We welcome those of you by iHeartRadio, by Spricker Radio, by Spotify Radio, from the TuneIn app, and uh, WJGR, uh, my good friend Jerry Green, and, you know, so many other uh, outlets that are coming. God is just blessing us and opening doors for us and making ways for the pastor's corner, and we're growing by leaps and bounds, and I don't know if we need a Nielsen's rating because God's rating seems to outweigh the Nielsen rating, but I'm not going to touch that because some of these stations might be a bit sensitive to that, so disregard that remark and let us move forward. Tonight we're going to talk about something special and let me start the opening dissertation and I'm going to give each of you an opportunity and chance to come in and give your perspective. Many of us know that back on January 1st we made all kinds of promises and all kinds of uh, pacts and different things with God that we were going to do certain things a certain way and we're going to lose weight and we're going to get to the gym and we're going to work out and you said so many different things. We call that the New Year's resolution. Resolution. And for the first eight days of the new year, we were gun ho and you couldn't stop us. You know, watch my smoke. I'm going to keep it moving and I'm going to be this and I'm going to be that. And we spoke over ourselves as if we believed what we were saying was going to actually come to pass. But as the days, the weeks, and the months went by, it seems like that zeal that we had on January 1st dissipated and started bringing us down to a grinding halt. Here we are in the month of June, to be exact, June 24th, 25th, toward the end of the month, we're six months into the new year, and the way we started doesn't seem to be the way some people are. Now, there are some who stayed with the course and kept moving forward and kept doing what they had to do, and here they are now, uh, six months in, and God is opening doors and making ways and performing miracles in there life and the word that they spoke over themselves is coming to pass and we bless God for those but for those who have fallen short who have given up who have thrown in the towel who have cried I quit we've got a special word for you tonight and it's coming out of the uh Epistle to the Hebrews, chapter 12 and verse 1. I'm only going to say verse 1 because I'm actually on the road driving right now. You know i got to put this in the hands of Apostle Whitlow to carry from here. It just simply says, seeing therefore... We have so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run this race with patience. One other thing I want to add, and then I'm going to get out the way after I make this last statement, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. Tonight we are going to talk about finish strong. What does it mean, Apostle Whitlow, to finish strong? Come on and talk to me. Well, here's the thing. Whenever we talk about finishing strong, it's always referring to how we conclude a thing, how we end a thing. And what I've discovered is that we don't always um, finish strong because we don't always focus on how to pace ourselves so that we can finish strong. Let me give you a typical example. If we run a race, most people know that to run a race, that you have to pace yourself, but you put in the final speed when you're doing your final lap and you've gotten to your final stretch. And what has happened is that people have forgotten how to do just that, find how to pace themselves. So what we do is we start projects, and we, when we get distracted or when something goes wrong, we change from that, and because we change from that, we don't become as effective or as thorough as we should or as we could, and for that reason, we leave it hanging, and that's why we don't 
finish strong. But here's what we have to do, and the scripture makes it clear. It says that you have to lay aside every weight. That means that you got to get rid of some stuff, stuff that you're hanging on to, stuff that is clinging on to you, stuff that is trying to keep you from moving at the momentum and at the pace that you're supposed to have. You got to get rid of some stuff, lay that stuff aside so that you can focus. I don't know if you've ever tried to run a race and and carry some stuff with you, but I found out that it gets you off course, it gets you out of the way, and you wind up losing balance, and therefore you don't finish the way you're supposed to. So what the Lord is really saying, in essence, is you got to lose all that stuff that is causing you to lose your pace, lose your balance, and it's causing you not to be as momentous as you should be. You need to keep your momentum. You need to keep the same enthusiasm. You need to keep the same vigor and strength and go forward and finish strong. Does that make any sense to you, Preach? Yes, it does. Now, I'm going to call on our uh, uh, Pastor Don Westbrook, and I'm going to have uh, Apostle Vincent Smith back clean up on this. And so, uh, Pastor Westbrook, what does it mean to you to finish strong? Come on and talk to us. Amen. You know, this is interesting because we had a similar conversation yesterday evening. Um, and I was thinking as the man of God was going forth uh, earlier to me, well, one of the things, first of all, you asked, what does it mean to me finish strong? And what comes to me is that the word of God says, don't faint. Amen. Don't faint. Don't lose heart. Hallelujah. It's, and sometimes we just need to encourage ourselves when we don't have cheerleaders. Amen. Sometimes we need Amen. to let the word that's already in us remind us of the promise that has already been given. Because the word of God says that it is eternally established. It does not return to him void. And it will prosper in the place where it has been sent. And then lastly, I think about scripture says, who has be with you? Why do you think that you're going to lose? Why are you disheartened? Amen. I went through something that was just so commercial in my, I mean, I've never experienced in all of my saved life. And I thought about that, that rubber bouncy, that thing, you knock it down, it, it gets back up, that bozo bouncy thing. Amen. And I felt like I was being tossed to the ground and pounced. Amen. But I got my bounce back. Hallelujah. So, I believe that you have to have that same kind of tenacity, that same kind of perseverance, pressing, pressing, pressing towards the mark in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. All right, come on and back clean up, Apostle Smith. What do you think it means to finish strong? Uh, As I'm sitting here listening uh, at my brother and my sister, uh, it also makes me think um, to finish strong. Uh, it also makes me think: How did you start? <laughs> how did you start? Did you did you stretch yourself out? If you've ever been to a track meet, the the runners don't the runners just don't get out on the track and start running. But before the meet starts, they're stretching. Feeling it back, lifting forward, getting the muscles loose to get going. So tonight, who's been stressed? It's called looking prostrate. Who? Who's getting the muscles in shape so that they can do the song called fasting? Who's been doing the fast with the right diet? That means turning off the TV and getting in the word. I to finish strong. You must have to look at where you started, what you did, so that you can finish strong. Hey, man, listen to this. And I agree with all that was said, and I, 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 I look at that particular scripture. Sometimes it takes a little bit of encouragement for us to be able to move forward in the things that, are, that God has provided for us. So let's, let, let's jump off from your point there, Apostle Smith. How 
did you start? Now, we could talk about two things here. What comes to my mind, and either one of you, Apostle Whitlow, you know I'm going to need you to take over in about 37 seconds because, you know, uh, I'm I'm at my destination, and you already know what I'm trying to do. <laughs> but anyway, uh, let's look at something here. You know, how did we start? Let's look, think about this. I know in, the, in uh, I believe it's Matthew, a uh, couple of the Gospels talks about Jesus made mention of two roads, two means, two ways of doing things. You could either take the straight and narrow, or you could go on Broadway. Now, I want to throw just a quick analogy in there to kind of help to embellish this just a little bit, and either one of you can jump on it and run with it when you get ready. I was looking at it from this respect. I could turn around, and if I was going to preach a sermon off of this, I would say, look, either walk up on 7th Avenue, which so we know the number seven is representative of maturity, or you can have a nightmare on Broadway. And those who did not finish strong chose the nightmare on Broadway. They thought they could do it on their own. They made a, 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 a way for themselves. They didn't ask God's direction. They didn't seek the face, didn't seek the Holy Spirit. They didn't seek God's guidance. They didn't even ask God concerning his word, concerning his will, and concerning his way. They thought they had it all under control, and they told everybody, I'm going to be here, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to be at the Superdome, and God's opened the door for me. And I mean, they just bragged on God. But the problem here is they never even sought the face of God. Does anybody agree with that, disagree with that? Amen. Amen. I concur. Talk. There, There are people... They, there are people who do things, and they have not sought the face of God. You know, the Bible says this. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. He shall direct thy path. And what I've discovered is that people have left God out of their adventures. They have left God out of their affairs. And so, therefore, that's why they don't have the strength. Because listen at this, listen at this. Paul said something to the church at Ephesus. He says in the sixth chapter and the tenth verse, finally, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Then he says something to the church, in, to the Philippian church. He says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. With Without the help of God, without the strength of God, you cannot carry the work of God or the load that God has given you. And so what happens is you find yourself becoming weary once you get started right away. Now, isn't it interesting that the scripture says, seeing that we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses? In other words, I'd like to submit that there is a cheering section for every believer on the face of the earth. That cheering section says you can do it. You got what it takes. It is in you. But the only thing is you have to allow God to help you to do it. We try to do too much without God. And I read a scripture, I believe in Hosea, I want to say it was uh, 10 and 13. It says, um, o oh Israel, thou hast destroyed thyself, but in me is thy help. In other words, what, he, what the Lord was saying is, you've been against me, and I've only been trying to help you to do what you need to do. And the truth be told, God doesn't want to do no more than just help. Oh, oh my goodness. That's all he want to do. And, and, and we, now. because we <laughs> reject because we reject God's help, that's why we find ourselves struggling to do what needs to be done so that we can carry forth the work, the assignment, or that which has been placed upon our life. Does that make any sense about it? Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. That makes a lot of sense, glory to God. You know, we're talking about, first of all, going back to Hebrews 12:1, and it says we're compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Amen. I believe that sometimes 
even in this realm, amen, as it is in heaven, so let it be in this realm, glory to God, that he will surround you and make divine connections of generals and lieutenants, amen, people with sound wisdom, amen, godly wisdom, that become your cheerleaders, amen, that become your examples, glory to God, that pour into you, that mentor you, that direct you, that give you guidance as they are led by the Spirit of God, by Holy Spirit. And so we win. We can win. And I believe it is the heart of Holy Spirit for us to have everything that is needed to move us, to direct us, to guide us in purpose, in divine destiny, in the name of Jesus for the purpose of establishing the kingdom of God. So when we run this race, and if we get weak, amen, we know that we have someone that is beside us that is like-minded, like spirit, amen, who is our cheerleader, who's feeding us the word, who's giving us that nourishment, amen, who's giving us sound, sound wisdom in the name of Jesus so that we can finish strong. And I also want to reference another scripture as we were speaking, and I thought about Luke 9, 57, and it said, you mentioned there are two roads earlier, Elder, amen, but the word of God tells us that we will follow him wherever he goes. As the Holy Spirit leads us, if we are allowing him to lead us, Mm -hmm. then we have no need to worry about ever er er ever erring or going the wrong way. Because why? Our heart is attentive to him. Oh, glory to God. Our ears hear him. Glory to God. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. And we have a mind, hallelujah, and a heart to obey what thus said the Lord. Amen, amen. Come on, Apostle mm-hmm. Vincent Smith. Uh, you know, the woman of God said so much there uh, just a minute ago until uh, we, we need to take a close look. When we're talking about finishing strong, amen, that means you don't have time uh, for playtime. You don't have time to be in and out. You don't have time to be up and down. You know they, Come on now. they used to sing. They used to sing that years ago. Sometimes, sometimes up, sometimes up. Down. Yeah, come on. Sometimes, come on. Sometimes level to the ground. Well, mm-hmm. I'm gonna tell you something. Anybody that got that much movement need to ask God. Get me still. <laughs> come on. Come on. <laughs> because because the problem is in your movement. In your movement, you're not getting the proper nutrients that you need. Mm. That's how interesting. Are you, how are you going to finish strong and you up, you down, you, you level, you're running, you, you, you're skipping, you, you, you're crawling, you're rolling. You got to be still. He said, be still. Amen. And oh, my God, God, you're skipping. Come on here now. My God, so, you know what? I, Look, I, go ahead, go ahead. Keep going. And, and I want you, I want you to understand tonight, Amen. That some folks need to be still long enough to get some of Peter in them, because he says, "Desire the sensual milk of the word." You're not going to get strong if you don't have strong bones. Amen. I agree with you. Let me share a quick story with you guys before you come on, Apostle. Let me share a real quick story. I was a swimmer when I was in high school. And up in the New Haven area, I was a champion swimmer. And it was just sort of kind of an unheard of thing to have a black man dominating a white sport. No disrespect to my white listeners at this particular time, but that's the way it was back in that day. And there was a, my specialty was the 50-yard freestyle, the 100-yard freestyle, and the 100-yard butterfly. But on this particular uh, day, we did not have somebody to do the 200, uh, the 200 yard freestyle. I mean, the 500 yard freestyle, excuse me. And 500 yard freestyle is 20 laps of the pool. So, you know, I was a speedster and not a long distance person. So I decided to get in and give it a shot. I was going to get in here. I was determined that I was going to get in here and I was going to finish at least in the top three if I can't do anything else. 
the gun went off, I jumped in the water, and I took off with my little speedy self like I would as if I was in the 100. Now, a base uh, time for the 100-yard freestyle is a minute or better, you know, and it goes for if you're going for a school record, state record, whatever the case, it drops down to 59, 58, so on and so forth. So I'm out there at 100-yard speed and the first four laps, and I'm doing great. Now comes the next four laps. Now, keep this in mind. I got 20 laps to go. I've only done four. So now I'm slowing down just a little bit, and I'm like, huh, huh. I said, oh, man, what was I thinking? So I'm getting out there, and come the next set of laps, and by about the eighth or ninth lap, I'm like, you know, uh, I'm still going, but I, I don't have the speed I had when I first started. By the time I got to the 12th or 13th lap, I was like, what the heck was I thinking? Is there a way to get out of this gracefully? Why don't I just drop to the bottom of the pool and maybe somebody will come get me? Well, I finished the race, but here's my point. In Ecclesiastes, it says the race is not given to the swift, neither the battle to the strong, but to him that endures. This race, if you're going to finish in this race, it's not something, it's not a microwave activity. This is a marathon, and it takes time. And I like what you said earlier, Apostle Smith, about getting your muscles train and getting the right conditioning so that you can run the race. Swimming, just like track, you have to be conditioned to be able to do whatever the race calls for. Because if you do not condition yourself, you will find yourself by the wayside crying for help. How many times have we started out in God and we got saved and we had the zeal and we were just so excited to be saved and to be a brand new Christian and we wanted to do everything, not everything, everything. And so we're out there trying to witness and trying to win souls. Done. Went to the store and bought a brand old big old Bible put up under our arm and a briefcase to carry it in. And we're just out there trying to be everything we can be. There is no etiquette. There was no training. There was no mentoring. There was nobody sharing with you and showing you the way. There was nobody to feed you the sincere milk of the word. You trying to eat meat and you ain't but a week old. Somebody come on and talk to me about that. I want to I want to show you something. I, I want to I want to show you something real quick because there's something I'm hearing in my spirit. One of the reasons that people don't finish strong is because along the way, what we do is we begin to rely on folk who we think are our helpers, and helpers are not replacers. Helpers are not replacers. People can help you along the way, but they cannot take your place. People cannot run the race for you. They might be able to carry you a distance, but that's only for you to recuperate so that you can get back in it. Anytime I watch a NASCAR race, I notice that every now and again they get a they blow they get a tire blowout. So the team uh-huh. what they do is they put a, they take the old tire off, put a new tire in, and that car gets right back out there. Nobody from the team takes Please. over the race. Nobody, nobody from that team Come takes over that. the race. That, that driver has to continue. And no matter how chaotic it may be, no matter how fast the car may go, he has to still get around and do all the laps that are necessary, and he has to do it in a timely manner because that's what we're on. Amen. We're on a set time. Saying that to say this, we start many times, we can start out like you were saying, we can start out being real fast, and then all of a sudden, because we weren't prepared, we didn't stretch, we didn't get the right nutrients, we didn't train properly, we find ourselves slowing down. When we slow down, we find ourselves becoming weak. When we become weak, we lose interest. When we lose interest, Mm -hmm. we want to start other projects. When we start other projects, we leave too many things hanging. That's not what we want to do. You already said we made these commitments to this year 2019. We're half, just about halfway through the year, and yet you got people who are like, you know what, I'm ready for 2020 now. Oh, but you haven't even finished in 2019. <laughs> there were things that Come you said you were going to do. There were things you said you won't get done. There were things you said you needed, but yet what you've allowed is you've allowed what you've allowed what you've attached yourself to to want to carry the weight. Come on. For you and do it for you and paste it for you. No, that's not it. The Bible says that every man has to do his share. Every man has to carry his weight. Every man has to bear his own burden. I can't do yes. it for you. Yes. I might be able to help, but I can't, yes. I can't do everything for you. You got to carry your own. 
and and so and in like manner, I tell people, I will pray with you, I will pray for you, but I will not pray instead of you. You gotta do your there part. There you go. You got Bless to God. do your part. And the important thing is, and one more thing I wanted to point out. One of the other reasons that a lot of people they don't finish strong is because they take a heck of a beating from a lot of these preachers who don't do nothing but rape them of oh their strength, and they want oh, they want to all that. they want to do is 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 press them, press them, press them, press them, strain them, strain them, drain them, drain them, and then all of a sudden they don't have no more vision, they don't have no more dream, they don't have no more goals because it's been raped. Mm. Oh, my God. Now, Papa Smith, you're about to say something. Go ahead. Yeah, let, let me tap in with that. Papa uh, 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 said something there that, that I, I want to go back to when he was talking about the NASCAR uh, uh-huh. and, and, talking about, and talking about being a help, even though it's your race. If you notice, when a NASCAR car pulls into the pit stop, when mm-hmm. they change that tire, they have a 30-second window to get that tire there you go. and another one on and let that car go. Nobody Amen. in Christendom, nobody in Christendom got time to be burping you, changing your pamper, sticking a pile of fire in your <laughs> mouth, and talking about go ahead with God. The key word that the apostle used was we are looking for help, not for people uh-huh. to take over, not for people uh-huh. to take over and become me. See, that NASCAR team know that they are there to help the driver. Amen. Amen. If the gas run low, they don't have to run into no coke and get the gas and come back. They got the gas right there. Pour it there in, you go. Close the job. Get out of here. What there you go. Learn, what we must learn in the church of God, if we are help, you are not there to take over. You're there to give them the necessary thing that they need, and tell them keep it moving. There you go. We, Amen. We, we Amen. Amen. We have, we have hindered so many people trying to become trying to become them instead of helping mm-hmm. them. My oh, Lord. Oh, you got to talk now. And we, wind right, up, pass and we wind up hindering them instead of helping uh-huh. them. Somebody hey, you ahead. know that happens. Come on there, uh, uh, Westbrook. You know, I'm, I Come on. so much has been said. Amen. I'm not uh-huh. muted. I'm not muted. There's nice. so much that's been said. One, the first thing I heard is that when we begin to rely on others to be our mm-hmm. press, hear what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. When we begin to uh-huh. rely on others to be our press, that codependency, oh, I'm, they they going through something, pray for me. And I'm saying, can you not pray for yourself? We have My heard goodness. the same My. word. We are eating at the same table. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Uh-huh. What are you doing with the bread that you are receiving in the name of Jesus? Mm. And then we talked about My that 30-minute window in the name of Jesus that these drivers have. They have a team that's assembled that knows strategically what needs to be done, when it needs to be done in the name of Jesus. And it made me think about the season that we are uh-huh. walking in with our times uh-huh. that the spirit of God is moving in a particular way, whether it's in a spirit or I'm sorry, a season of grace, a season uh-huh. of favor, hallelujah, a season a season of correction. You have to have discernment to know what season you're walking in so that strategically you'll know how to walk in that season in the name of Jesus. And then Apostle alluded to the fact that if you're not prepared mm, if you are not Come prepared, on. meaning you don't have the muscles, the flexibility, amen, you don't have the strength, you don't have the core strength, you don't have the core strength, and I believe that it's important. I heard this all this week. If you don't have a life that is founded in prayer, you don't have no power. Amen. Amen. And I think that's what we've been talking about all of these past weeks about the importance of prayer. 
in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now Amen. I'm beginning to understand a life that is prayerless. I don't want you praying for me. Mm. Mm-mm-mm. Glory My to God. God. You do. You don't even have a relationship. Uh oh. Uh oh, somebody's being exposed. You're not talking well, to listen. my daddy. You may be talking to, you know, the view. Somebody. Calling you the real and somebody, but you're not Uh-oh, talking to my go. father. Mm, she you said know, the view and the real. That's all I got to say because we can go well, somewhere listen, with that. You know what? That's all I got to say. No. Well, listen, I, I appreciate what you guys are bringing to the table. I know Apostle Whitlow had to go to work. Uh, and we bless God for him and his input and try to give him as much time as we could because we've got a few minutes to go here. But the bottom line is this. I'm hearing this. When we look at that scripture in Hebrews 12 and 1, seeing that we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, that tells me, and taking the NASCAR analogy that's been laid out on the table, that tells me those NASCAR, those pits, the, the pit crew to me is a representation of mentors that God has anointed and appointed to come forth and to develop you. The same way Paul had to develop Timothy and Jesus developed the disciples and things like that. A lot of people don't want to talk about discipleship when it comes to walking in the Lord. A lot of people think that discipleship is a cuss word, and they think that it's, it's, a, it's traditional and it has nothing to do with their walk with the Lord when all the time, if you are not disciples, you're not none of his. I mean, there are so many who are going to be in the end time uh, and it's going to be the parable of the sheep and the goats, the sheep obeyed the word and allowed people whom God placed in their life to do what they need to do and develop them, and they were mentored, they began to model, and they began to multiply, but then there are those goats over there, those hard-headed, stiff-necked folk that wanted to do it their way, and they're going to try to stand before the Lord and come up, we prophesied in your name, we laid come hands on, on the sick, and they recovered in your name, and we did this in your name, and we did that in your name, we held revivals in your name, and people came to you and got saved. Jesus is going to simply tell them, depart from me. I never knew you. What he meant was simply this. We never had a relationship to where you would take time and seek my face and ask my opinion and what I thought and how I felt about the situations and the circumstances and the conditions that you were dealing with. You went out on your own. Most people would go out stepping out on faith and stepping out on, what's the word I'm looking for? Y'all help me out. There's a difference between stepping out on faith and stepping out on perception. That's where I'm looking for. Those that are stepping out on faith are trusting the God of their salvation. I believe Apostle Whitlow made mention of Proverbs 3 and 5 a little earlier when he said, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. But those who are stepping out on perception, they're looking at the situation. They're looking at the circumstance. They see an opportunity that might even be lucrative to some of them. I'm sorry to say, but there are a lot of wolves in sheep's clothing out there pretending to be pastors and pretending to be shepherds. God is calling for the true shepherd in this day and age. Those of you who do have not learned how to finish strong, one of the first things you need to do is make sure that you're in a Bible-believing church. The next thing you need to do is allow that shepherd to mentor you to help you to go through those hard times, to get through those rough situations, to get through those tough situations. God has put some people in your life for a purpose. They ain't there just so you can exercise, just like the doctor. What would a doctor be if he never picked up a stethoscope or made a, a prognosis or a diagnosis on what the condition was for the patient that he's supposed to be taking care of? Or what would a lawyer be if he did not go into a courtroom and fight for you? Just another person with a piece of paper that says they have the ability to do, but because you would not allow them to do their job, they end up failing you, and now you want to blame everybody because of your failures, because you failed to open the door. Come on, somebody, and pick it up. I just want to say there's one distinction that is very clear. Amen? Sheep have a fragrance, glory to God, Mm -hmm. but wolves have a stench. You're going to know when Uh, there's a Amen. You're going to know when someone's been in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Amen. But you're also going to know when someone is operating in something that's other than God. If you have the gift of discernment, you will know. Amen. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. All right. Now, uh, Apostle Smith, go ahead. Let let me say to you, when we start talking about finishing strong, that Uh that 
there was a, there was a very strange analogy that came to me the other night. I saw something in a very old movie the other night that I had not caught in my previous years of watching that movie, a famous movie called Rocky. Yes. And in this movie called Rocky, he said something just as he's about to fight Apollo Creed. He yes. said uh-huh. to his manager, he said to his manager, I'm not worried about winning. I just want to last longer than anybody else that ever saw them. All right, now. Let what me say that? that again. He said, I'm not worried about winning. And thanks, we should not be worried about winning because God has already yes. given us the victory. All Amen. we need to do is stand strong in the midst of the battle and out, yes. outstand the enemy. Amen. I agree. Nobody, if you remember the movie, nobody has ever gone more than three rounds with Apollo. Uh huh. But Rocky took him a straight twelve, 12. rounds. He sure did. Now when Amen. you're talking Finish. about when you, when you're talking about finishing strong, you're talking about endurance. Yes. You're talking about endurance. Yes. You're talking about being able to go through without moaning and groaning and complaining. You're talking about being able. You you're talking about being able to do that, Amen, that God has called you to do with maturity. If you're going to be strong, then you got to stand up and go through what it takes to finish strong. A lot hey, of folks man. can't finish. A lot of folks can't finish strong because they're too busy whining while going through. All right now. I appreciate that one. Now listen, let me throw this on uh, uh in there with you. I mean and we wanna ask the question, well, how do I get back on track after I've fallen off? We'll talk about that in the. Uh, if we don't do it in this episode, we'll get it in the next uh, on next week. But I want to go back just a little bit, and I want to go back to the NASCAR analogy because there was something else that I was noticing. I noticed somebody talked about going to Sunoco and getting the gas, and somebody else talked about changing a tire. What about the driver themselves? If you notice, there is a one member of that team that comes and brings the driver a drink and gets that windshield cleaned off so the driver can clearly see. I like how the scripture said in Isaiah when he said, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. Anybody that wants to finish strong, A number one, let me go back even further because I believe you said it, Apostle Smith. We have to first learn how to get dressed. Know that there is a battle before us. There are going to be obstacles before us. There are going to be challenges in front of us. And if we are not properly dressed, we won't be able to address those obstacles. We won't be able to address those challenges. We will not be able to address the opposition that stands before us. I like how the scripture says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. It is his might that we need to stand in. And then it goes on and instructs us on what we need to do. To the individual that might be listening by way of iHeart or Spotify or WJGR or, 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 or the TuneIn app or wherever you're listening, whether it's Facebook Live or Periscope, you have to understand that in order to face the test that you are about to go through, you've got to put on your war clothes. If you do not have on the belt of truth and know that the word is truth, that the Lord Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the light. You've already kind of lost the battle a little bit. If you don't have on the breastplate of righteousness or the helmet of salvation, if you don't have the sword of the Spirit, if your feet are not shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, if you're not praying with all manner of prayer and supplication for the saints on every occasion, you already put yourself in a somewhat losing situation. If you are going to finish strong, you have to go back to where it all began, and
and it goes right back into that secret place where you dwelled with the Most High, where you abided under the shadow of the Almighty. It goes back to that time when you told the world that the Lord was your helper, that the Lord was your refuge, that the Lord was your strength. It was during that time, and when those trials, troubles, tribulations, and persecutions came up, and when the fiery furnace was lit and it got hot in there, you didn't worry about anything. Why? Because in the beginning, you did it right. You conditioned yourself. You took the word of God. You learned what it said, and you applied it to your everyday living. Let me stop right there because I know somebody else has something they want to add to it. Hi, my name is Elizabeth, and I Hi. just want to say, how you doing? I just want to share something because I'm listening to what everyone is saying, and I'm receiving it in the spirit, and it's just, oh, my God, God is so good. I want to share um, something about everything that we're discussing today um, with with a little testimony. In 2008, I had a stroke um, in the, in the um, right side of my brain that paralyzed my left side. And mm-hmm. um, I gave my life to the Lord when I moved down here to PA in um, 2000, 2011, sorry. And um, uh-huh. when, I, when I came down here, um, I was looking for an apartment, right? And the, the landlord who was showing me the apartment, he was a believer. And at that time, I had not given my life to the Lord. And he was talking about Jesus. And I was like, wait a second, like, I just want the key to my apartment, you know? And, <laughs> I, and he's showing me the whole house and everything is Jesus, 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 right? And I'm like, wait a second, uh-huh. man. Just let me sign this lease. Like, I need a place to live, right? And I mm-hmm. kid you not that when I entered that kitchen, when I entered that kitchen, I felt the love of Jesus. I mean, it was yeah. so powerful that now I didn't even want the apartment. I just wanted more of Jesus, who he was talking about, you know? And mm. I I know today, I didn't know when I first gave my life to the Lord, what everything was about, you know, and so I had a pastor, and I shared this yesterday at a Bible study, who took advantage of that, but God Mm -hmm. spoke to me, and the only reason that I'm able to stay in this race, and to persevere, and to continue no matter what, is because I know that it was not a man who brought me to Jesus, but it was Jesus who brought me to himself. Amen. He brought me, not only that, he showed me, he showed me through his word, he showed me through, I mean, I can't even explain to you that I went from being partially paralyzed on my left side, and when your left side don't work, your right side don't work well either, so it was like I was paralyzed because my kids used to take me a bath, it was like so hard, right, but he restored me, my healing came from him, it came from him. So he showed me that he was my healer. He showed me that he was my provider. How do you work 8.30 in the morning to 4.30 at night without a single dime, but you're still able to feed your children? You're still able to get the light, keep the light on. You're still able to find a job that you wasn't even searching for. Mm, That's him. God has God. Glory to God. And let me Go tell ahead. you, I'm here today after the abuse of a pastor. But you know what? Uh-huh. I learned through God, okay, that it was God who brought me. It was God who saved me. And if it wasn't for God, I would not be here. Because let me tell you, when I was a little girl, and I used to sit in my room as a little girl, and I used to talk to him, I didn't know I was talking to him at the time. I thought I was talking mm. to my grandfather. And my mom, she's like, Elizabeth, you okay? You okay? And I'd be like, yeah, I'm talking to my grandfather. And then God showed me that was not your grandfather because I used to open a book that I didn't even know was a Bible, a kid's Bible, and I'm reading it. Mm-hmm. Thank you. So you have well, to you know. know what, uh, you have to. In order ahead. to continue this race, in order to mm-hmm. make it to that mark, you have to know mm-hmm. who you're serving. You have to know Amen. who brought you there, who started the Amen. race in the beginning, right? And then you listen to him. You have to listen to him because there's so many voices 
you know, and God gave me a dream about a wave, about a wave taking over and bouncing my body here and there, and I did not feel pain. I was looking down at my body hitting everything, and it, it was through his word that he said I'll be tossed back and forth by the wave as an infant my if God. I didn't listen to his voice. There you go. And yeah. I just now thank that, God that, that I'm able to hear you guys share your knowledge, your wisdom, right. Come on, you know, Apostle. and everything. It's, it's a beautiful uh-huh. thing because I really feel it in the spirit that that God is in God everything is that you guys are speaking. My God. Amen. Amen. Come come on. I know, Apostle, you wanted to say something, and then Pastor Westbrook come right behind him. Somebody's listening to the show. You got to turn your radio down because you got feedback. You got feedback, somebody. Come on, Apostle uh, 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 Smith. Yes, I, I just want to say that uh, uh, even in our walk with God, mm-hmm. we got to have a determination yes. to finish strong. Uh-huh. Uh, we, 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 we got too many crybabies in the kingdom. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Always need a push. Always need uh-huh. a prophecy. You know, uh-huh. I, I, I don't understand these prophecy junkies now. Uh huh. Everybody, every, everybody needs Go on somebody now. to prophesy to them. Everybody Come on. Need, need a, they need a confirmation. How much more confirmation mm-hmm. you going to get besides God speaking to you? Amen. 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 Are you trying to? Are you trying to tell me what a man or a woman says to you hold higher authority than God speaking in your spirit? No way. Mm. We got to learn. You, we got to learn how to finish strong in amen. every way. And it, 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 it's sad today that we, the people of God, uh-huh. have become have become so uh, dysfunctional. In our race, mm-hmm. until we're uh, running backwards and think we're going forward. My goodness, my and goodness, never, that's something I've never seen anybody make it to the finish line running backwards. That's right. Not yet. <laughs> the race is Maybe you forward. <laughs> Amen. That's right. The, the race is it's, forward. It's not backwards. And when I look at the body of Christ right now, we are mm-hmm. not finishing strong. We will not finish strong because we're going backwards My rather than going forward. Take a... and, and, and watch All this right now. Man. Everything that God has given us in our mm-hmm. ability to move says go mm-hmm. forward. So why are we going forward? Yes. Backwards? Yeah. Mm. We Glory want the to leeks, God. the garlics, and the onions. Go ahead, uh, 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 Pastor Westbrook. I know you wanted to say something. I, I I just like what the man of God said. I would just like to also reference Amen back to the scripture. It says that you know we we are what ease, it, ease, the sin that which so easily <clears throat> beset us. At, but let us run with patience the race with patience that is set before us. Amen. So we're Amen. all running a race, and we're one body running a race. One body. Remember, he's coming for a bride, not just an individual, but for a bride, his body. Amen. So we're all running Amen. this race. And I liken it to that, you know, that race where they pass the baton so that the other one can come up and take, take the charge and go for it. But we're all running the same race. We're all Amen. reaching the same destination. We all have Amen. the same motivation to finish the race. It doesn't matter Amen. who gets there first, but finish the race. Glory Amen. That's right. That's right. But you know what? And let, let, let me strong. go ahead. There you go. Now, see, let, let me throw something at you because you just made mention of passing the baton. That baton was passed to us by that great cloud of witnesses. We're talking about men who went into lion's dens and the mouths of lions were stopped, men who stood in fiery furnaces, men who went from the pit to the palace, men who t- got a mantle transferred onto them, a special anointing given by only God himself, men who God challenged through the prophet to 
draw back the bow and let the arrow fly as far as it could. And when he recognized the fact that the arrow had great distance, uh, he found out later that had the arrow hit the ground, he would have covered far more ground had he let the arrow hit the ground in the beginning than he yes. did letting the arrow fly through the air. Because when the arrow yes. flies through the air, it's leaving ground uncovered. Now, let me move up Amen. just a little bit. Uh, what I'm trying to get somebody to understand, and I know Paul talked about it in the book of Philippians. We have to learn, and if we're going to finish strong, we got to forget yesterday. Forget what happened last night. Yes. Forget what happened last week. Get away from all the failure and the shortcomings and those things that have stopped and blocked your progress. Forget about last week. Yes, yesterday's history, and tomorrow's a mystery. We've got to live this as if this were our last day today. In Amen. order for me to finish strong, my mind is, guys, Apostle Smith had already said, my mind's got to move forward in the things that God has provided for me. Everything that I'm going to need to be victorious in this race has already been provided. It's a question of do I have the patience to wait it out and allow God to manifest. I like the scripture in Romans 8, 28, which says, and we know all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. God has mm-hmm. called my life for a purpose. God has anointed me and appointed me for such a time as this. He's given me Amen. permission to share the ministry of reconciliation with those with whom I may come in contact with. And this was no accident. The main thing is I I've got to make people understand. And I, I know Apostle Smith and I and Miss Elizabeth had a conversation toward the end of the Bible study last night uh, for Apostle Smith's Bible study. And he turned around and he talked about some things. And uh, in the process of talking about what we were talking about, I sat there and I listened for a minute, and this thought process came to my mind. If God needed me right now, would I be in condition or in a position to be able to be the blessing he's called me to be? Well, here it is in a nutshell. If I've not gotten myself ready or prepared for such a thing or for such a time as this, the answer to that would be no. I want to say and and end this portion by saying this because we got to move forward. God is looking for those who know how to take their eyes off their past, let their past be peace, and look to their future. Now, I like the scripture that comes behind that that says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. If we are going to finish strong, we've got to look to Jesus. We've got to use his examples. We've got to pay attention to him. We've got to center ourselves in his will. What is it that the Lord is calling us to do? What is it that the Lord requires of us? What is it that the Lord wants us to put out and, and, and make available to those? Some of us have to learn how to be transparent parent and more vulnerable because you're going to come across people who want to share things but they're afraid to open up because they've been hurt before and I know we've talked about this in times past I don't believe there's a thing called church hurt I just think hurt is just plain old hurt and I'm going to leave that like that because some people would beg to differ with me because you know it's a funny thing we get hurt in church and we want to leave the church and never come back and all our hopes and dreams and aspirations are thrown in the trash God had sent a word to you. Now, wait a minute, let, me, let me digress for a minute. Apostle, let me throw something else at you. You talked about men who do not obey the word when the Lord speaks to the spirit. I was talking to a young man just last week at a conference, and he came and said people come up all the time and say, that, you know, he, he, he posed this question. He says, in a situation where God is speaking to your spirit, do you listen to what God says in your spirit, or are you going to wait to some what you call appointed and anointed man of God to come and tell you what thus saith the Lord. He says, well, I've come to this conclusion, and I know I'm I'm skipping just a little bit, but I'm going to get back on my story. Here's what he came up with. He says, when somebody comes up to him and says, God told me to tell you, and in his discerning spirit doesn't and realizes that it is not the spirit of God but a man speaking, he says, "Uh, what did he say? And did he speak with an accent? And I'm thinking to myself, okay. So I'm going to pick at this individual. I got a better idea. Why don't I just do this? And I know I, I – why don't I just do this? Why don't I look to see what he says in his word? Because his word is always confirmed each and every time. I got to take my eyes off of what I used to do. I got to put my eyes on where he wants me to go. Yeah, I failed, but let me take that failure and use it as a lesson plan to know what not to do 
next. I need to finish strong, which means I got to get back in the saddle. I got to get up off the ground. I may have fallen down. The Bible says a just man falleth seven times, but he gets back up again. I can still finish strong. I remember one thing, and I'm going to close with this, and somebody else can come in. I'm going to close with this. If you remember a couple of Olympics ago, I think the brother was from Jamaica or one of the – one of those countries where in the middle of the race he pulled a hamstring and the officials were trying to get him to come off the track and he said, no, I'm going to finish this. And he was hurting and was in pain and he was trying to be strong. When his father came out there on the track, put his arm around his son and helped him across that day, he broke down and cried. But you know what? That let me know that I've got some help. I've got the Holy That's Spirit right. right there waiting and willing to help me. I've got the great Amen. one living on the inside waiting oh and willing to work Come in me, now. with me, and through me. Yes. There's no reason for me to lose a Come race on. that's already been won. There's no need for me to lose Amen. a victory that's already been given to me. Praise Why God. is it that I can't finish strong? I found out that any time I walk, go around, walk around in the annals of my own mind, my mind is the greatest prison that I'll ever, ever be in. That's I've right. got to free myself of my thought process. I've got That's to free right. myself of the things I think. I've got to get away from that stinking thinking and line up with the word of God. I can Amen. finish strong. I am a can-do person. I do have the strength of Christ. I have the mind, the purpose, and hold the thoughts Amen. of his feelings. I've got to yes. get away from the carnality of my mind and move in the power of the spirit. Somebody come on. Amen. I, you know, I just oh, don't worry that right Pastor Pointer is on. Amen. I mean, the word has revived him. He is on the call. Bless God. How you doing, Pastor Pointer? Praise the Lord. <laughs> come on. Go ahead and say what you're going to say, Apostle Smith. I know he'll come on when he gets uh, I think the phone might be muted. Let, come let on. Me say this. Yeah, they muted uh, the phone. I, I wanna, Hold on a minute. Wanna... Go ahead. I want to lift this up, and uh-huh. I don't want to. I don't want us to miss this. Did that scripture say that he is the author and finisher? And finisher. Come on. That's what it said. That's what it said. Wait, 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 wait now. Wait now. I'm gonna run that by one more time. Go ahead. He, is, he is the author. Oh. Author. What does an author do? He's the original writer. Yes, he is. So what we must understand is that God has already written us in as a winner. We got to get in the Yes. Already a winner. Glory. Yeah, you can't win it if you ain't in it. (laughs) The race is not for the square. I saw this today. I saw this uh-huh. tonight. Actually, mm-hmm. if this scripture is telling us just get in the race, I've already written that you are the winner. Amen. There you go. My Amen. God. Amen. Think notice, about notice, that. Notice the text now. He said the author and the finisher. Yes. So and he has the finish line. Yes. He has, he has already written how it's going to begin, what the middle's going to be, and what the finish is going to be. Amen. All, all Amen. we got to do is get in there with God. Amen. The, race is, the race is not for the square. It's for uh-huh. the one that endures. There you go. How you doing tonight, see, my brother? I know I see you're feeling well, and I bless God for you. <laughs> yes, thank you. I was I was down, but I, I'm glad I'm up now. Because, see, what you guys were talking about, I love because mm-hmm. God, cause we got a bunch of jack leg Christians who don't want to finish their course. Mm-hmm. They don't want to finish their course. They want to go mm-hmm. ahead and say, okay, because because Pastor Pointer is swift, okay, I'm, I'm out of the race. Well, mm-hmm. you know what? The race is not for the swift. The race is for the one that endures that course. And there you, go. Right. you better speak. My mm-hmm. goodness, I hear you. And I'm happy to have you on board. Thank you for sharing that with us. We're going to start winding down and uh, – 
I don't know which one of you wants to do our editorial piece tonight. Somebody volunteer. I don't know if you want to do it, Pastor Westbrook, or if you want to do it, Apostle Smith. Uh, either one of you, Apostle one Smith, of y'all go choose. For it, but God. all right, well, Apostle Smith, come on and give us our editorial, our summary for tonight. Let 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 let's put a nail in this one so we can set up for the next one. Well, let me say to every listener tonight, first of all, we thank you for tuning in, uh, whether by uh, by phone or whether, amen, by Facebook or however or device you have tuned in tonight. Uh, let me close this by saying, amen, it is apparently clear tonight from what you have heard that there is a cloud of witnesses who have already finished the race that says you can finish it if you would just get in the race and know that God has written a first place ticket in your favor already. He has given you the right. Listen at this now. Because the Bible said he knew your end from the beginning. And yes, he so, did. When you got in the race, he already saw you winning. Amen. Oh, I know that just Amen. messed up somebody. Oh, he come on now. <laughs> when, you, when you got in the race, he already saw you winning. So Amen. Stop, mm-hmm. falling, stop falling. Stop faltering. Stop letting everybody get on your nerves. Stop letting the devil trick you. Get in the race. God has already set the course, and you are a winner. Amen. Hey, yes. Amen. Now, Amen. I'm going to call on you, Pastor Westbrook. Pastor Westbrook, I need you to tell them, how can they get in the race? I how? want you if to know, somebody to... hallelujah, that Come if on. you have to be, if you're dragging, if you have to crawl, hallelujah, if you have to have someone carry you. You Amen. make a determination that you are going to finish no matter what comes. The word of God, I like this. It says, I was perplexed but not destroyed. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Whatever you now. need to do, however you need to do it, amen, as long as you're not sinning in the name of Jesus. But however you need to do it or make it happen by the grace of God, You do that. Now, our race, I want to also note, is going to be different for each and every one of us. Amen? Because our book is different for each individual. Amen? But we have the same destination. And And if you have relationship, if you know him, come on now. How do I get that? How do I get that? How do I get that? You need to first and foremost know that he is your savior. And how does he become your savior? He needs to be your Lord. And how does he become your Lord? Well, there's a thing called the sinner's prayer. Amen. We all did it on this call. And you simply say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Now, that name has power alone by itself. When you All say right. that name, you are cutting through atmosphere, stratospheres, amen. You are causing a shift in your life in the name of Jesus. So you say, Father, mm. in the name of Jesus, I come to you and I ask you to forgive my sins. I realize you have to have an acknowledgement that you know, that you know without a shadow of a doubt, that he is the only one that is capable of forgiving your sins. So yes, you say, he is. I realize that I am a sinner, and I mm-hmm. am in need of a Savior. And your yes. word says, if I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead, your word says, I can be saved. Shall. <laughs> Come on now. I give my heart to you. I surrender my life to you. So I ask you, Jesus, to be the Lord of my life, to lead, hallelujah, to lead me, to guide me, to guard me, to govern me, to protect me right now. So I confess with my mouth because confession has to be made. You have to say something, hallelujah. 
So you could yes, pray. Hallelujah. That, hallelujah. That you want him to be Lord of your life in the name of Jesus. And you have to believe your confession because you have to believe what you say. Glory to God. So you make yes. confession that he is your Lord in the name of Jesus. Mm. And you yes. receive him as your personal Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. And you are saved. Now, the next step will be for you to get connected to a church in your local area. And I don't mean a church where there are wolves pretending to be sheep in the name of Jesus. If you have any Mm -hmm. questions of finding such a church, I would advise you to connect with the pastor's corner. Amen. Yes. And we will make sure that we find a church in your area. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. We thank you so much. Uh, Let me give you a chance to say something, Pastor Pointer. I know you're just getting on. And again, I'm so grateful for the fact that God strengthened you and gave you the ability to get on. I don't know if Pastor Donna's with you. I don't want to leave the two of you out. You're such an important part. Uh, in terms of the pastor's corner, because I mean, you know, that old school flavor, we can never get rid of it. You know, my mama back in the day used to make greens and then she used to make what's called mean greens. When she'd make straight greens, it was all collards. But when she made mean greens, she put the collards, the kales and the other greens together. And well, that was just flat out good eating. So that's what I'm saying about you and Pastor Donna. Come on, say something for me. Amen. All I was going to say, you know, when it came to the sinner's prayer, all I could do is say, "Now that you, now that you say, start running your course." And those right, who are already running a course, those already who run a course, finish your course. Those we all be in church hurt. We all be in church hurt. But I tell you what, just because just because I've been church hurt. I'm not going to sit there and get out of church. I've been, Mm-mm. you know, I, I, bought, I bought lemon cars. Dog. I don't stop driving. And church is more important in your life than a car. So just because you've been church hurt, don't just give up on God. Finish your course. Yeah. Okay, well, pass it to my wife. Amen. Amen. And remember, thank the Lord, because prayer works. I want everybody to know that prayer works. Amen. My God, it does. God I truly enjoyed Amen. the testimony of the young lady who came up on. I mean, we were sitting there listening um, by, um, I think it was on the internet, and my husband heard her testimony. He's like, I need to get on. <laughs> He's like, if God can do it for you, sweetheart, he can do it for him. He had the same Amen. type of and Amen. God healed you. And we looking and we know that God can heal him. And I just thank God for your testimony and, and how yeah. you Praise met the, the Father. My God. And see that example Amen. right there with the person who mm-hmm. even was talking to her about Christ, that persistent is what God wants us to continue to have for um his people. Just continue to to talk to them and tell them about Jesus and tell them how good he was. She was talking about an apartment, but he was talking about something greater than an apartment, something that she could Amen. live in forever. Amen. And I just Amen. thank God for this this radio broadcast and everyone on it. God bless you all. Amen. Thank you so much. We appreciate you, my sister. Thank you, guys. I want to thank uh, my listening audience, our listening audience. Let me get it right. I want to say special thanks to Apostle Vincent Smith for being with us. Uh, of course, Pastor Dawn Westbrook, uh, Pastors Donna and Daryl Pointer for being here, and Lady Elizabeth, we thank you for coming on and for thank being you, part. And there are so many others that are listening right now by way of telephone, by way of the different radio stations and the different media outlets that are there. We have to bring this to a close, and before I close, there's going to be that same announcement you heard at the beginning, and then we're going to get the song right behind it. So, Sister Kimmy Kim, prepare everything. Let me say this, and let me do this. As you go through the course of your work week, remember to keep the pedal to the metal, the pep in your step. Keep that glide in your stride. Just enjoy life. So I keep the smoke in your stroke. Don't you dare let life cause you to choke yesterday's history. Forget about it. Tomorrow's a mystery. Stop worrying about it. 
to keep blessing God for the gift call today. Live it to the fullest and remind that devil that he is defeated. Jesus Christ is still Lord. You have a purpose. God has a plan, and there's an anointing in your life to push you forward. Until next Thursday at this same time, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. Central Time, and 7 p.m. Pacific. On behalf of the Pastor's Corner, I'm Elder Ernest E. Richard, along with our brother from another mother, uh, Apostle Irvin I. Whitlow, and the team that makes up the Pastor's Corner. We want to say to you, good night. Sister Kimmy Kim, bring on that announcement and that song. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Coming to Morningstar, volume of the book, Church International, 125 Dixel Avenue in the city of New Haven. It's the 24th annual Holy Convocation, hosted by Apostle Vincent L. Smith and Lady Yvette D. Smith, taking place July 22nd through the 28th in the year 2019. This year's theme, if you thought that was crazy, just watch my growth. Preaching on a nightly basis, starting off Monday, Bishop Robert J. Gay of Greenville, North Carolina, Chief Prelate of the Unison Free Will Baptist Churches Incorporated. On Tuesday night, Bishop Desert Nick Willow M. Moody of Agape Christian Center of New Haven, Connecticut. On Wednesday night, Lady Kadeem Steele of Mount of God Churches Incorporated. Thursday night features a very special session with a live recording of the Apostle Irvin I. Whitlow from the Pastor's Corner of Dunamis Assembly Worship in Augusta, Georgia. On Friday night, Kenya Moles Bird of Cathedral of the Holy Spirit will be coming to preach. During the day from 4.30 till about 6 p.m., Back to God, featuring Minister Brian McCall of Morning Star Church of New Haven, Connecticut, Prophetess Jamaica Jeffries of Freedom International Ministries of Hamden, Connecticut, Minister Shane Hawkins of Wayfaring Ministries of Hamden, Connecticut, and Pastor Plachette Garland of Move of God Deliverance Ministries of Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Also in the morning sessions, Tuesday through Friday, there are going to be workshops featured by Pastor John Cotton Jr. of New Hope Baptist Church of New Haven, Connecticut, Reverend Kelsey Steele of Barrett Memorial AME Church, and Pastor Ernest E. Richard Jr. of Power to Stand Outreach Ministries, Associate Pastor at Miles Memorial CME Church. Also, there is going to be an ordination on Saturday, the 27th at 12 p.m. Come one, come all. Let's go up in the Holy Ghost. Come join Apostle Vincent L. Smith as he closes everything out on Sunday at 12 p.m. If you want to have a high time in the Holy Ghost and you want to release a crazy praise, then meet me at Morning Star, Volume of the Book Church International, 125 Dixwell Avenue in the city of New Haven.
Hallelujah. 